Hello YouTube! This is going to be part three of how to modify the Revis RT97 repeater. This video is going to be about how to turn down the power output so you can hook this repeater up to an amplifier. Um, like I said in my other video, and if you watch my other video, the output is too high. And for the amplifier that I'm going to be using, it will damage it. Now, if you look on your screen here, the amplifier that I'm using is the Redivus RT91 amplifier, which is this right here. This is the one I'm going to be using. And the owner's manual, as you see on your screen over here, the most we can handle input-wise is 6 watts input. Um, so if you saw my other video, the actual output wattage before the duplexer was 11.1. So we got to turn this down using the software that came with the repeater and the programming cable. Um, I'm going to show you how to hook up your watt meter. You're going to need to use a watt meter and you're going to need a dummy load. Now, I have not have explained in other videos why a dummy load should be used when testing wattage output. Um, the reason being that it's recommended that you use a dummy load is because the SWRs for a dummy load are going to be more or less perfect. And that will give you more accurate reading on your wattage output. If you hook up to an antenna and do it, you may um, not get an accurate reading due to the SWRs being higher. So that's why it's best to use a dummy load if you want to uh, do wattage testing of an amplifier and that will give you the um, best results so as you can see i have a dummy load hooked up i have my watt meter hooked up now remember if you don't remember other mother video you got to hook this up in before the duplexer so what you do is you on the low side of the duplexer if you don't have it marked you can trace the cables back so the low side on this duplexer is over here. You can trace the cable back, and that went to here on the repeater. So I unscrew that. I hook the duplexer cable to the antenna in on my watt meter. Then I hook the transmit part of my watt meter to the actual repeater. Now you can see here I wrote down 11.1 .1 was the wattage coming out of the repeater. So we got to turn that down. So what we're going to do is I'm going to minimize this owner's manual. There's the software. Now I wish I could show you the actual usage of the software. And for some reason... I can't when I have all this going on, when I'm when I have the split screen happening and I got the, it recording, I get communication errors. Um, so off camera, I, I already programmed the repeater to do a low wattage. But I'm going to show you in the software what you do, and your repeater will come with a cable that you got to hook up. And you plug in your USB port. And after you install the software, you would go to program and you would go to read data. Because you got to read the info from the repeater to the computer. Once you do that, it will come up like this. And here's where you can change your power output right here. This one only has high or low. That's all. It, there's no medium. So you change it. Now, I'm going to change all of them because if I ever want to change channels, I don't want it to be, um, I want it to be a situation where I only change one frequency on, on uh, low power and the rest are on high. So you change them all. Then when you get done doing that, you go back to program and you do write and it will write to the repeater. So I already did all this.
and we're going to see what we get for a wattage output after I turned it down. So I'm going to zoom in. What I'm going to do here is let's see if we can kind of zoom in on the camera here uh, so you can kind of see what we get. I'm going to try to do this. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Now, when I key up, the microphone may cut out my microphone. Um, it's a wireless microphone I'm using to speak with you now. So it may cut out, just to let you know that. But watch the meter here. Let's see what she does. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, testing. Well, it's not terrible. It's um, a little high. Now, I think I saw it go up to 6.9 watts. Now, is that going to, you know, damage the amplifier? Is that going to hurt anything? Well, you would like to keep it at 6. I mean, I don't think it's going to, you know, burn it up like immediately or nothing like that. I could probably run it this way. And I probably will, to be honest with you. I'm not going to worry about the 0.9 watts. Um, I could get an attenuator and put it in line. Uh, and that would cut it back down. But you got to remember here, though, my meter may not, it's not 100% accurate. It's plus or, plus or minus 5%. So, yes, it could be higher than 7 or it could be uh, lower than 6. But I'm not going to sit and really worry about it. I think we're going to be okay. Um, you know, that's what my opinion is. I know there's going to be people out there probably going to say, oh, no, no, you can't do that. You're going to burn it up. Well, if the manufacturer, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking the manufacturer, when they said six watts, I don't think they mean exactly six watts. There's probably a little bit of give in there. I wouldn't be pumping in 11 watts, I'll tell you that. But I think we're okay at 6.9, 6.77. I think we'll be all right. So that's um, some good news. Now, the uh, next step for me would be to go ahead and I got to take the this all back out here, the duplexer back out, and we're going to uh, possibly do a test with the new duplexer and the uh, amplifier. And I'll do a video on that setup, how we're going to set that up, and we'll test it. And uh, we'll see where it comes out at. A matter of fact, we'll probably do a, a, a video on the bench, and then I may do a, a distance test video of that. So, there you have it. I hope this video is useful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe, and thank you.